Hey, what's up, everybody? Dorn Aldana here coming at you with another episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast from MortgageMarketingCoach.com. We're going to be talking about something that I believe a lot of mortgage professionals need to know about, but frankly are asleep at the wheel at. And a lot of times they get things twisted as it relates to decision making. And oftentimes we slip into a slippery slope of thinking that being deliberate and intentional about taking our time with making decisions and being very risk adverse and doing all our due diligence and taking time, deliberating, pontificating, researching, dilly dallying and quote unquote thinking about it is going to help us be successful. So we're going to talk about today is why indecision will kill your success, will kill your momentum, will kill your leadership, will kill your ability to create breakthrough results, and most importantly, how to fix it. So decision making. Every single day we have decisions to make, right? From the time we wake up to how many times we're going to press snooze or whether we're going to say no to the snooze. Or maybe it's whether we're going to make phone calls or whether we're going to reach out to our strategic partners or whether we're gonna reach out to clients or whether we're gonna plan our work and work our plan, whether we're gonna follow through with our plan, whether we're gonna to go to the gym or not go to the gym. Every single day we have opportunities to either follow through on a simple discipline that will propel us to our breakthrough or whether we're going to be complacent, be neglectful, drift and settle for second best or procrastinate on something we know we need to do, but again, neglect, complacency can creep in if we allow it. And so this decision-making muscle must be built. If we wanna create breakthrough results in our lives, we gotta become leaders of ourselves, leaders of others who lead by example through powerful and effective and swift decision-making. Let me ask you this, when's the last time you saw anyone who was uber successful in anything, who had the habit of indecision, who had the habit of prolonging something that could be done quickly. And instead of being decisive, they procrastinate and they delay what can be done today for tomorrow. When's the last, you found, last time you saw one person, one person who was exceedingly successful in anything in life, who had the habit of indecision and procrastination? Chances are, you don't know a single one, right? Why is that? It's because decision-making and being decisive is a perennial trait of the successful. It's a quintessential perennial trait of the top producer, someone who can make swift decisions, make things happen now, not someday. Have you noticed that? So if we look at that, why is it that people don't take swift decisions. What well, kind of reminds me of the story of Tom who arrived in a new neighborhood, just bought a new house, loving his environment, love his neighborhood, love his house. But for some reason, the neighbor's dog just kept howling. At first he's like, hmm, maybe the dog is like sick or something. But then the next day comes, the dog's still howling. The next day comes, still howling. Arrgh, arrgh. Tom's like, what is the deal? This is becoming a nightmare. Got this new house, thought I bought my dream home. Now I got this freaking howling dog next door. What's the freaking deal? After several weeks of this, eventually Tom was like, enough is a freaking enough. What the hell is going on with this dog? I'm gonna find out. So he tromps over to the neighbor's house and as he approaches the house, the dog is still howling. Arr! And Tom, all disgruntled and impatient, perturbed and disturbed, goes towards the steps of the house and notices that the owner is sitting on the lawn in a recliner reading a newspaper. So he goes over to him and said, hi, I'm new in town. My name's Tom. The neighbor introduces himself and says, nice to meet you. My name's Mr. Tan. How can I help you? Tom said, well, I'm just curious. What's the deal with your dog? What do you mean? Well, he's howling. He's been howling for weeks. Is he sick? What's going on? He said, oh, no, no, no. He's sitting on a nail. Tom's like, 
Say what? He's sitting on a nail? Why doesn't he just get off the nail? And as the neighbor, Mr. Tan, looked at him like it was not that big of a deal, he sipped his coffee before responding. He said, well, Tom, it just doesn't hurt enough. How many of us have nails in our lives where we're feeling the pain of a problem and yet we don't take proactive action to get off the nail? We all have nails in our lives, right? We have financial nails where we're not making enough money. We've got too much month at the end of the money. Maybe our spouse is breathing down our neck. Maybe we're having to dip into lines of credit, credit card just to keep ourselves afloat. Maybe we've got stagnation or regression nails where we've been at the same place over and over and over again. We're getting bored of the same old problem. Maybe we're sick and tired of the up and down roller coaster ride. Up one, one month, down the next. Income is up and down, up and down, and it's just a feast or famine roller coaster ride, worrying where our next deal is going to come from. Maybe we got the health pain, the health nail, where we need to get in shape, but we're just, for whatever reason, procrastinating, delaying, making excuses. And yet we know we need to do something because our body is telling us we're overweight, we're not feeling good in our body, we're feeling lethargic. We all have nails. Some of us have relational nails. Maybe it's with our spouse. Maybe it's with our kids. The big idea is everybody, you, myself, everyone on planet Earth, if you're alive, you're going to have nails. The question is, are we getting off the nail and being proactive and decisive in finding a solution? Or are we simply enduring it and enabling it and prolonging it by delaying proactive, swift, decisive action. Because we're either being deliberate about making a decision to solve the problem, or we're making a decision to have indecision and to prolong the problem and to allow the problem to persist. Either way, we're, 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 we're making a decision. Sometimes we get it twisted and we think, oh, I have the luxury of thinking about this and maybe doing something about this tomorrow or next week. What we don't realize and oftentimes what we neglect to see is that by delaying what we can do today and doing it tomorrow or next week, we're actually saying yes to laying on the nail. We're saying yes to continuing to howl about the pain of that nail. And oftentimes it's because we're not connected to how much it's costing us to sit on that nail. We tell ourselves softening lines like, it's not so bad, I'm doing better than most, I'm doing better than last year, I'm doing better than my neighbor, I'm doing better than my parents, I'm doing better than the people I hung with in my neighborhood when I was a kid. I come from modest and meager means, I'm doing much better than I came from. All the people I came from, they look at me and I'm like the hero, right? Or we soften and we say, it'll get better. We soften and say, oh, this is just the time of the year. It's always slow during this time of year. We soften and we tell ourselves delusional optimism lies like, I'll figure it out. And yet we've been in the same cul-de-sac of frustration month after month, year after year for years. We never cracked the code on it. And what we, we tell ourselves this delusional lie that if we just keep banging our head against the wall and throwing enough yogurt to the pan, eventually something's going to stick. And so we tell ourselves softeners. If you're overweight, one of the softeners is, oh, I'm big bone, right? Sound familiar? I'm big bone. Or, you know, it's just that time of year. It's that season of the year. You know, it's, it's Halloween. And of course, Christmas is coming. So, you know, it's just that time of year, right? I mean, how am I supposed to lose weight when it's Halloween and Christmas, right? I'll wait till January. That's the time to do it. Notice how we soften it and we allow ourselves to lay on that nail and howl about the problem and suffer in the problem as opposed to enacting proactive, decisive action to solving it once and for all, actually leaping off that nail and renouncing the nail, not resisting the nail, renouncing it. Resisting it is simply complaining about it, telling our friends about it, telling our neighbors about it, telling our family members about it, complaining, and whining and sniveling 
and not doing anything about solving it. That is laying on the nail. And sometimes we enable that because instead of realizing how painful it really is, we soften it. We soften the problem. And that is how we stay stuck. That's how we stay stuck in a rut of stagnation, regression, and we continue to bang our head against the wall doing the same old thing and expecting the same old result because we're not willing to do anything to solve it. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, Doran, I don't do this. I'm decisive. I take swift action. And if that's the case, that's awesome. If you look at your results and your re results are on an upward climb and you're in massive momentum, chances are it's because you've got a habit of decisiveness. But those of you who have been in this game for a while and you're still at the same place, chances are, is it possible one of the reasons why you're not further ahead in your life, in your business, in your career, in spite of the market, in spite of rates going up, in spite of low inventory, is because of this habit of indecision? Is that possible? I can tell you right now, it's very possible because I have not met one single top producer, not one, who got to be a top producer by being indecisive, by procrastinating, by delaying, by laying on the nail, so to speak and just simply howling, hoping it's gonna go away. And so softening the problem is absolute death rattle to breakthroughs, to success, and to leadership. Because if you soften the problem, what you do is you enable mediocrity. You are saying yes to suffering and stagnation. You're saying yes to settling for second best. And that's just not the champion's way. So, the first step to creating a breakthrough as it relates to building this decisiveness muscle is just to make a decision within yourself that you will no longer lay on the nail. You will no longer eat from the bread of the howling dog. You will just no longer accept it in your life, period, end of story. Not one more day like that, no way. Because you're a champion, you're a winner, you're an overcomer, you're a dream achiever, you're a conqueror. You've got dreams to fulfill. You've got a family to feed. You've got goals to crush. And when you see yourself in that identity, you just will not go one second in the pity potty story of being the dog laying on the nail, howling helplessly. Screw that. That's not for you. Let other people do that, not you. Let other people lay on the nail, not you. Let other people whine, and complain about the problem and not do anything about it, but not you. You are charging a new path. You are carving a new way. You are creating a new legacy. You guys with me on that? So let's talk about what it really takes to build this decisiveness muscle. What does it take to become powerfully decisive and to build your leadership as someone who makes sound and decisive decisions and charts the course towards breakthrough results. What does that take? Well, before we can get into what it takes to become that kind of a leader and create that kind of muscle of decisiveness, let's talk about the reasons why indecision kills your success, because I don't think I've fully articulated how corrosive and how undermining that indecision really is. So the first reason why indecision kills your success is because Indecision is a decision to prolong the problem. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, indecision is a decision to prolong the problem. It's a decision to delay getting off the nail. It's a decision to be a drifter as opposed to a driver. It's a decision to be at the effect of circumstance as opposed to be at the cause of circumstance. It's a, it's a decision to be a bitch of circumstance as opposed to making circumstance your bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like it's about you leading your life. And when you don't lead your life and you are pointing fingers outside of yourself and blaming outside of yourself and blame shifting and putting something outside of yourself is more powerful or as a reason why you can't have what you want or as a reason why you, what you have is inadequate or scarce such that you can't do anything about your situation, you are not being at the cause of your life. You're not being a leader of your life. You're being at the effect. All the results in your life are an effect. You are the cause. 
Let that soak in for a moment. You are the cause of your life. Your income is a cause of your life. Your bank account is a cause of you. Your income is a cause of you. You are the cause. All those are effects. Your income is the effect of you. Your bank account is the effect of you. Your relationships are the effect of you. Your ability to go out there and create relationships with top producing real estate agents is not the cause, it's the effect of you, your leadership, your power, your decision-making, your articulation, your communication, your energetic frequency, how you show up. All those results are not the cause, they are the effect. And so the first reason why indecision kills your success is because indecision is a decision to prolong the problem and to allow the problem to persist. The second reason why indecision kills your success is it allows for the law of, of diminishing intent to creep in and derail you from taking proactive action in the direction of your dreams. Think about it. Anytime that you are in the heat of the moment, the iron is red hot and you get to this fever pitch, emotional intensity where you realize something must be done. Maybe it's quitting smoking. Maybe it's firing a, a, a staff member that is unreliable and incompetent. Maybe it's uh, letting go of a friend that's just unhealthy and corrosive and toxic in your life. Maybe it's you need to invest in yourself with a proven plan because if you don't, you're going to keep spinning your wheels, doing it the hard way, banging your head against the wall, and you cannot go another day like this, doing it the hard way, wasting time, energy, money, sacrificing time away from the family, going nowhere. And you get to this point where you really get emotionally connected to the consequence of the problem and the problem persisting. Now, if you let indecision derail you from taking proactive action, what happens is instead of striking that red hot iron and having that iron become malleable to your dreams, become malleable to your intent to create the life of your dreams. It's almost as if you start to wipe really ice cold blocks onto that red hot iron. All of a sudden it goes and the law of diminishing intent starts to kick in. The law of diminishing intent is that if you don't strike when you have that moment of inspiration, when you don't take action, when you have that moment of emotional intensity, if you don't say to yourself, I need to get to the gym and you get this perturbance and disturbance, you're like, you look at yourself in the mirror after you get out of the shower and you're like, this is disgusting. I'm done with this. I'm done with settling with this. I know I'm better. I know my family deserves better. I know my kids deserve better. I know that my leadership and my legacy deserves better. And you just get that a moment of what I call positive perturbance, where you just get so perturbed and disturbed, you're like, man, I need to do something about this. You need to strike while the iron is hot right in that moment and block schedule a time or call the, the gym or do something in that moment to make that intention real with a real commitment. It's like Tony Robbins, he says, don't leave the site of setting a goal without taking some kind of proactive action towards its accomplishment. Because if you do, you allow the law of diminishing intent to derail you, to distract you, to delude you into thinking that you can wait till tomorrow. And then what happens when you wait till tomorrow? All of a sudden, the iron is now cold. It's no longer malleable in your hands. All of a sudden, the emotional intensity has dissipated. All the inspiration has dissipated. And now all the stinking thinking, all the inclination towards procrastination and deliberation and thinking about it and delay all creeps in. Excusitis creeps in. We excuse ourselves, we justify, we rationalize, which is basically rationing lies to the mind. Next thing you know, days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, and nothing happens. Stuck in the same old place, the same old rut. This is how people stay stuck in the rut of average their entire lives, because they do not strike while the iron is hot. They let the law of diminishing intent kill their dreams.
one decision-making moment at a time. So you got to use the law of diminishing intent in your favor by striking while the iron is hot. Does that mean you need to make rash decisions? No. Does that mean, mean to, does that mean you need to make decisions that aren't sound decisions? No. It means that you make sound, intelligent, reasonable decisions that are based on sound judgment. There are strategic decisions that are based on sound judgment, but you make them quickly. You feel the intensity, you make sound decision, and you strike now. That's the muscle of a champion. The decision-making muscle of a champion is taking action now with urgency. You guys with me on that? And then the third reason why indecision kills your success is because it creates a habit of indecision. Every day, we're either building positive habits that help us towards our dreams and our greatness and our progress, or we're cultivating unwittingly hindering habits that continue to thwart us and self-sabotage our success. Success is not an event. Success is the cumulative effect of daily habits. And when you allow yourself to eat from the bread of indecision, you're cultivating a very anemic decision-making muscle. You let that decision-making muscle get weak. And instead of having a sense of urgency, instead of having pep in your step, a sparkle in your eye, and bold, intelligent, strategic decision-making muscles being built, you get weaker and weaker and weaker in that area. You get in the habit of having an anemic, weak decision-making muscle. And you wonder why you struggle to get ahead in your business. You wonder why your income is anemic at best. You wonder why you're in stagnation or regression. Wonder no longer. It's a habit. It didn't happen in a day. It happened daily through the complacency and neglect of indecision. If you want to be a champion, you don't want to get champion level results, you can't afford to eat from the bread of indecision. You can't afford to neglect, to be complacent, to drift. You must drive. You guys with me on that? Because again, think of one person. Tell me one person you know who's inspiring to you, who's a real leader, who creates breakthrough results, who creates extraordinary light, uh, results in their life, who has a habit of indecision. Show me one. You won't find one. Why? Because they do not exist. Indecision is the habit of mediocrity. Indecision is the habit of the average. Let other people have that habit, but not you. You've got dreams to achieve. You've got goals to conquer. You've got a destiny to fulfill. You guys with me on that? So how do we rationalize indecision? Because let's be real, it's so insidious, isn't it? It's so insidious, it's so easy to justify indecision, especially if we have, that, if we have the habit for it. What are some of the insidious ways that we justify indecision? Well, let me give you one example. Let's say you made a decision to make an investment. Maybe it was a stock investment, a real estate investment, personal development investment, whatever. You made an investment where you invested time and or money. And let's say hypothetically you lost a bunch of money. Maybe it was a few thousand bucks. Maybe it was tens of thousands of dollars, whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden you connect the dots and you say to yourself, hmm, that was painful. I don't want to do that again. I don't want to lose that money again. I don't want to make that mistake again. I don't want to have that embarrassment or humiliation again. And we make the erroneous connection that the reason why that happened is because of indecision. We call it rash emotional decision in our own minds. But if you chalk it up, it's I made a swift decision and that was the reason why I made such a bad move. And so in our brains, we say the thing I need to avoid is swift decisions. That's the death rattle of success when you make that connection. Because the truth is the real reason why you had that misstep and that quote unquote learning experience called a mistake is because you did not enact proper discernment. 
you did not enact wise discernment. It had nothing to do with you being decisive. It had to do with your discernment. The real reason for that mistake was not decisiveness. It was based on the decision, a decision that had erroneous assumptions attached. Maybe you made a decision where you thought it was sound, but it really wasn't sound. Why was it not sound? Because your decision was based on erroneous assumptions. Maybe you thought it was legit and it wasn't legit. You had erroneous assumptions. Maybe you thought it was viable and it wasn't a viable. Why? Because it was based on erroneous assumptions. So you see the problem with the quote unquote mistake, which is just another opportunity to start again more intelligently, was not that you were decisive. The problem was that you lacked wise discernment, wise judgment. Making the judgment quickly was not the problem. It was the assumptions that you were basing your decision on. Does that make sense, guys? So discernment is something that you have to build. It comes with wisdom. It comes from experience. It's like the the young uh, student that went to the old wise sage and said, master, teach me the secrets of success. And the wise old sage said, well, I mean, the first step, young man, is that you need to enact wise judgment. Well, sir, how do you get wise judgment? Well, you need to have bad judgment, right? That's how you get wise judgment is through bad judgment. And so we learn from that. The only risk in life is not making a risk. The only risk in life is not taking a risk. You can't win by playing defense, right? Play any game, whether it be basketball, hockey, whatever, and just solely play defense. You can't. The secret to success is not in not losing. The secret to success is losing faster, is failing faster. It's failing forward. It's learning, 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 learning from all these mistakes. But again, it's not about making decisions slowly. That's not the key to success. It's basing your decisions on sound judge, judgment. So let me give you some examples. If you're making a, an investment decision, questions that would help you be discerning in, way, in making investment decisions would be like, is the method proven? Is it time tested? Does it have a track record? Is there documented proof that it works? Are there reviews? Are there case studies? Are there success stories? That gives you credibility. You don't want to be the pioneer because you know pioneers get arrows in their backs. You don't want to be one of them, right? Is it based on timeless principles or is it based on a fad, on a trend? These are the kind of questions you want to ask. The other thing you might ask is, has this person gone the distance before me? Does this person have the scars to prove it? Okay. Or is this something that is battle tested? Those are sound questions that will help you to enact sound discerning decision making that will help you to make a swift decision based on sound assumptions. Does that make sense, guys? So again, the only risk in life is the risk of not risking. If you wanna see someone who is the epitome of mediocrity, of settling, of drifting, of being unhappy, unfruitful, and is just existing in life as opposed to thriving in life, I'll show you someone who never risked. I'll show you someone who plays in defense 100% of the time who does not take risks, who does not stretch out of their comfort zone, who is continually living in a cul-de-sac of indecision. You want to create breakthroughs. You want to be a powerful leader. You want to be a difference maker in your home, in your workplace, in your community. You want to lead by example. You want to inspire other people to greatness. You don't want to just be the hero. You want to make heroes. It's going to take you leading you into making sound decisions quickly, 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 quickly. You don't press snooze in the morning. When that alarm goes off, you give yourself a minute or two of gratitude, marinating in gratitude, and you bounce out of bed. No more indecision. Screw the freaking snooze button. That's for average. You don't do average. You do exceptional. You do extraordinary. 
when it comes to going to the gym, you don't flounder, you plan in advance, you put your gear together, it's all ready to go, and you just put it on in the morning. It's like boom, 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 quick. It's like the saying from one of the podcasts I recently uh, listened to where the lady was saying, if you want to get powerful results, you want to turn your life around, you want to break through procrastination, just do the countdown. Three, two, one, blast off. Do it. Three, two, one, blast off. Do it. Take action now. Build that decisiveness muscle now. Take action now, right? It's all about cultivating the habit where you just, you don't think, don't think, don't think. You want to get yourself stuck in mediocrity and prolong the problem and continue to lay on the nail and keep howling on the porch, annoying all your neighbors, <laughs> including your friends and family who are sick and tired of you being sick and tired of you complaining. That's what you'll do then. You'll think about it. You'll procrastinate. You'll deliberate. You'll do your research. You'll do your due diligence until you're blue in the face. The only thing that the sitting on the fence will do for you is give you a red butt by sitting on that red, sitting on your fence with pressure on your butt for prolonged periods of time. It's not going to create breakthroughs. You will never see any breakthrough coming from sitting on the fence. Have you noticed? It doesn't happen. You just get a red butt. That's all. Now, if you're looking for a red butt, sitting on the fence will do you just fine. But if you're looking for kick-ass rocket results, you got to get off the fence. Give your butt a break and take swift action towards your goals. So where are you sitting on the nail today, friends? Where's one place you've been sitting on the nail where you've been settling? Perhaps it's in your business. Perhaps it's in your health. Perhaps it's in your relationships. Perhaps you've been thinking about needing or wanting to get a mentor for a long time and you've been delaying. You've been making excuses. You've been living out of scarcity. You've been letting outside circumstances dictate. Whatever the case may be, now's the time to get off the nail, friends. Now's the time to get off the nail and start building the muscle of decision, decisiveness. Now is the time for your breakthrough. Tomorrow will never be the time because tomorrow never comes, does it? Now, right here, right now, in this very moment, friends, this is your pathway. This is your gateway. This is your opening for breakthrough. You can make a decision right now to call the gym and get a membership. You can make a decision right now to schedule time to reach out to referral partners. You can make a decision right now to reach out to us. If you'd like to get help, if you realize that doing it yourself, doing it the hard way ain't working, and you're like, I'm done with doing it the hard way, and you're looking for a better, smarter, more fruitful way, maybe the opportunity right now for you to change your life and to move to, in the direction of your dreams and your goals is just to simply reach out for help. And if that's you, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough coaching call where you can get on the phone with me or one of my consultants and we'll just get real about where you're at. We're going to look at where you're at now. We're going to lift up the hood on your business and really give you clarity like you've never had before about where you're at right now. Where are the nails in your life and your business right now? And then we're also going to look at where do you want to be? If you got off that nail, what would life look like? What would life feel like? And then if we can help you bridge that gap from getting off the nail and moving on and up to your dreams and goals, then by all means, we will show you how to do that. And if not, frankly, we will be the first people, the first people to advise you to pass on our services. So if that sounds cool to you and you'd like to explore possibilities and options, if you'd like to explore how you can get more clarity than ever before on how, what it really takes to create a breakthrough in your business, maximize your lead generation, maximize your lead conversion, be able to work smarter, not harder, mine the gold from your database, attract solid realtor partners without the self-inflicted hell of cold calling and chasing realtors around with rate sheets and donuts or visiting them on open houses and making mere friends instead of making solid partners. If you'd like to learn how to work smart instead of just working hard, I invite you to reach out to us by going to mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Book a call 
get on the calendar with us. I would love to have the opportunity to connect with you on the phone. One of my consultants would love to have the opportunity to connect with you as well. And uh, let's see if we can be the catalyst for your breakthrough, shall we? If nothing else, you're going to leave the call with massive value, massive clarity, and we'll have some fun. Sound good, guys? All right. Well, that's all I got for today. I've just given you the secret sauce, distinctions, ideas, and tips you need to start building your decisiveness mu muscle and to really become a decisive leader, a, de a decisive leader who takes proactive action day in, day out, powerfully, and leads by example. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This is Doran Aldana, the mortgage marketing coach coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Now go forth, take massive action, bring massive positive energy to that action in the form of decisiveness, determination, and passion. And you, my friend, will get massive results. Thanks for listening, guys. Peace. Talk to you soon.